Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and in today's episode, we're looking at the words in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 15-17 through 17, for how we are to live as free men and women. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 15-17, through 17, which read, For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the king. As we look at Peter's words here, In these three verses, there are three solid points for us to take a look at. First one, for it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. When I read this, what I think about is all of the, all of the naysayers, all of the people who discredit, discount, um, who come up with reasons to not believe in God, to not acknowledge him, to not think that he exists. And friends, I'm not talking about people who have never been exposed to the gospel or who have never been, um, you know, who simply do not have that knowledge. I'm talking about those who would blatantly speak against and would call the people of God something that they are not for whatever reason, because of their experiences, because of whatever reason. If you look at these words, and it's not to say that those people should just be quiet. No. Peter says, for it is God's will that by doing good, friends, we as followers of Christ, the burden is on us. By doing good, by showing the love of Christ, by living the love of Christ, by walking in the ways. What it means to be a follower of Christ is to follow him, which means to do the things that he did, to act in the ways that he acted, to love in the ways that he loved. By doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Friends, it's not about arguing. It's not about trying to prove based on scientific theory, based on sound doctrine, based on any of those things. Because, oh my goodness, in John 13, 34 and 35, Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Verse 35, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Friends, that doesn't mean that there isn't room for correction. Absolutely, of course there is. But friends, more important than correction, more important than proving your points, more important than winning the argument is that you love one another is that we, as the body of Christ, exemplify what it is to love one another. Love God, love people. If you can do those two things, you don't really have to worry about anything else. Because from those two things, 
everything else will flow in harmony. So friends, that's our, that's kind of like the first thing for us to mull over and for us to think about and roll around and meditate on. Are we doing good? Are we loving our neighbor? Are we loving ourselves? Are we loving those around us? Whether we like them or not, are we loving them in a Christ-like fashion? Are we doing that good? so that the ignorant talk of foolish men will be silenced. Because here's the thing, friend, your words, words are important, but actions speak much louder than your words. Which is why Peter doesn't say by talking good. He talks about doing good, that we do good, and that silences the ignorant talk of foolish men. Do you see the difference there? Peter doesn't say that by talking a good game, we'll make the other people be quiet. That's not what he says. Doing good. So that's the first one. Second one, live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as servants of God. This reminds me of Romans chapter 6, where Paul says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Friends, we are not to use our freedom as a hall pass. We are not to use our freedom to do whatever we want and think that, oh, And I said this in in an earlier episode to just be like, oh, well, it's fine. I can do whatever I want. I'll just ask for forgiveness later. Friends, that does not indicate a true change of heart. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying that, uh, again, as I've said oftentimes, when you decide that you are going to follow Christ, when you become a Christian, that doesn't mean that your life becomes perfect and you never make mistakes again. Far from it, friends. You will make mistakes. Some of them will be bigger than others. Some of them you will sit with yourself and not even be able to comprehend how you could have made such a foolish mistake. Friends, this isn't about mistakes that we make. It's about the intentionality behind it. Live as the free person that you are, the freedom that you were granted in Christ. But you are not to use that freedom as a cover-up for evil. You are not to use that freedom as a get-out-of-jail-free card or as license to live, in, to live in the world and be of the world because you are no longer of the world. And sometimes that's difficult for us. Sometimes that can be really hard to remember that we are set apart and to remain set apart. Remember, friends, there's no promise that the Christian life is going to be easy breezy, but it is worth it. So the second, the second piece here, live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as servants of God. When you evaluate your actions up against, does this agree with, is this in alignment with being a servant of God? If I think about that, I would say that I've definitely moved the needle more toward living as a servant of God, but certainly am nowhere hitting the nail on the head every single time, every single day, every single moment, every single action. But I am working towards it. That is my intention. It's my intention to continue to grow deeper with him. It's my intention to continue to develop more meaningful, deeper fellowship with him so that when people see me, they see him. That's my intention. That's my goal. That's what I'm working towards. 
Doesn't mean I'm not going to make mistakes. So then I want to move into this third, this third piece. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the king. Sometimes we get really stuck on, on this one. Show proper respect to everyone. Friends, again, I, I feel like I need to really emphasize this. You don't have to like everyone. There are going to be people in this world that you simply don't agree with, that you don't get along with, that you have no outward commonalities with. The Bible doesn't call us to be best friends with everyone. Everyone you meet is not going to be your bestie. That doesn't mean that you should disrespect them. That doesn't mean that you should speak ill of them. That doesn't mean that you should do any of those things. Love the brotherhood of believers. Show proper respect to everyone. This goes back to the golden rule, friends. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Don't treat other people the way they treat you, or the way you think they're treating you, or the way you think they're going to treat you. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Let God worry about the rest. You worry about you. You let God worry about the rest. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Be in awe. Be in wonder. Be in reverent, just, uh, there's, I struggle every time to find a word within my vocabulary that brings proper justice to the thoughts and feelings that these two words, fear God, stir up in me. Because again, it's not about being scared of God. It's not about cowering in the corner, being frightened, being afraid. This fear of God is one of just complete reverence and complete amazement and awe and wonder and just, ah, I wish, I wish there was a word that could adequately describe this for me. And lastly, honor the king. Friends, if we will simply, if we will simply be intentional about treating other people the way that we want to be treated, about not going into the, not getting into the level of, of picking apart and identifying all the reasons we don't like them. If we will simply look at each other and try to see each other through a lens of love, not the warm and fuzzy, feel good, come here and give me a hug, not that kind of love but the agape love that comes from Christ. The love that Christ had for every single soul that has ever been and will ever be created. That he gave his life for us. He didn't just give his life for you, friend. He didn't just give it for me. He gave it for the person that disgusts you. He gave it for the person that you couldn't agree with them on anything. He gave it to the person who doesn't look like you. He gave it to the person who doesn't sound like you, who doesn't speak your language, who doesn't live in your neighborhood, who doesn't live in your country. Friends, he gave his life for the forgiveness of sin for all people. So when you look at someone whether you like them, whether you love them, whether whatever, whatever your personal feelings are about them, when you look at another person, another human being, know that Jesus went to the cross and died for them just as much as he went to the cross and died for you. So 
So friends, today, let us practice. Let us practice living in freedom through living by love. Thank you, friend, for being here with me today, y'all. It is absolutely my joy, my honor, my pleasure, such a blessing to be on this journey with you. And I'm so grateful to be here another day with you. Friends, I want to know what's on your heart and what is on your mind today. So leave me a comment or send me a message and let me know. And I also want to invite you to come back and join me for our next episode to talk about freedom through Jesus Christ in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Until then. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.